You yeah, stripped the all. New York Times of their of their badge, and then you called them diarrhea. You, called them diarrhea. <laughs> okay. you did. You did. I'm just I'm just quoting you. Yes. You described their Twitter feed as diarrhea. I, I said it was the Twitter equivalent Twitter equivalent of diarrhea. Okay, it's not literally diarrhea, but no, no it's a yeah. you know, it's a metaphor. Um. <laughs> It's so fun. Tucker Carlson, for some reason, interviewed Elon Musk. Actually, we know why, because it gets a lot of attention, and uh, maybe people will continue to worship him for some reason. Uh, so they probably had a bit of a battle back and forth of who could be the biggest a-hole possible, and I think the jury is still out. But still, we'll let you guys decide. There's more going on here, because as he was chumming up, he's talking about this whole thing with Twitter and how great but not so great it's going, I guess, specifically for the people that he fires. What percentage of your staff did you fire at Twitter? One of the great business stories of the year. <laughs> I think we're about we're about twenty uh, percent of uh, the original size. Uh, so eighty percent left. Uh, yes. So. I mean, a lot of people voluntarily. Well, sure, 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 but but it's eighty percent are gone from the day that's, you took that's over. That's correct. Yes. So how do you run the company with only twenty percent of the staff? Uh, it turns out uh, you don't need uh, that all that many people to run Twitter. But eighty percent—that's a lot. Um, yes. Uh, over, I mean, if you're, if you're not trying to run some sort of uh, glorified activist organization uh, with, with, uh, and you don't care that much about censorship, then uh, you can really let go of a lot of people, it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the punchline. Uh, but apparently, uh, good businessmen live to just fire people. I guess that's how businessmen work, or is it just a wannabe Donald Trump? You know how great he's been at business. They're still laughing and talking about uh, people let go for much of no reason. Let's let them continue. <laughs> how many others, without naming names, but how many, I had dinner with somebody who runs a big company recently who said, I'm really inspired by Elon. And I said, you, the free speech stuff? He goes, no, the firing <laughs> the staff stuff. I want you guys to uh, pause here for a second and realize they think conducting an interview and then airing it of two rich guys laughing and joking about people losing their jobs based off of little to nothing and then going, I was talking to another business friend who says, I can't wait to do that too. <laughs> and they expect people to then go, oh, these guys are great. They're totally on my side. In fact, those are the type of people that I should listen to and believe their perspectives on things because that'll help my life out. In reality, it's a couple of a-holes laughing, literally openly laughing. It's gotten to this point now. It used to be like in images that people have in their heads of rich guys in, in smoke-filled back rooms laughing and joking about how they're screwing people over and laughing about it. They're doing this on TV now, and they expect you to laugh along with them. So if you are, you're the sucker. I'm just putting, in case you guys don't know yet, you're the sucker. You're the target. You're being fooled. They're siphoning everything out of you and they're laughing at you about it. So when they talk about low unemployment and all these lazy people off the dime of the American people and all that stuff that they say, they don't care. What they're doing is laughing at you. You laughing with them? As you go, man, I can't afford my rent. Look at these high prices of groceries. Do you see what's happening with gas? Tucker Cross and Elon Musk are laughing at you. There's more going on, but I, I, first thoughts on this, Miranda. So you know how the first time you ever watched The Hunger Games and you saw Caesar Flickerman and you were so angry at the way he conducted his interviews because it was so transparent that he was just a mouthpiece for the government? That's how I feel watching these two talk to each other and then air it and expect everyone to just agree with them about it. It is so incredibly frustrating and I can't get the time back that I spent watching it, which is also <laughs> very frustrating. Um, but yeah, for them to make jokes about laying 80% of a workforce off. Ha ha ha. They don't have a job now and I'm better for it. And then to air it to basically the same people and expect you to be like, ha ha. Yeah. Got them. Got me. I, it's unbelievable how anyone falls for it and, and follows them and believes in what they say. And they're so somehow good at Stockholm syndroming all of their viewers and I, it's so transparent, except for the people who are so soaked into it. People are watching what's going on in, I think, France, where all these, uh, the uprising of workers and everything, and they go, how come that doesn't happen in America? This is why, because you'll see people do things like that and go, yes, 
totally mm-hmm. against me. Uh, so as I talked about, we listen to people's perspectives strictly because they have some cash in their bank accounts. And then uh, and then they actually have conversations about birth rates and sex, and they expect you to believe that too. Uh, I had to watch it, so now you do too. And if you, if you look at the history uh, of civilizations, the rise and fall of the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Sumerians, um, Rome, and, and I think we just want to make sure that, that you know, uh, we, we have civilization go onward and upward. Um, and uh, that's, for example, why I'm concerned about decreasing birth rates and, and um, the fact that, for example, Japan uh, had twice as many deaths last year as births. There's this, the old question of, like, uh, will civilization end with a, a bang or a whimper? Well, it's currently trending to, to end with a whimper in adult diapers. Yes. Uh, which is depressing as hell. The most depressing. The mo- I mean, seriously, yeah. yeah. War is less depressing. Yeah, I'd rather go out with a bang. Yeah, and then <laughs> with your shoes on, yeah. not with your More diaper More exciting. On. Yeah. <laughs> which one of these guys in the, and Elon's kids... Uh, and Tucker's kids, you think, are signed up for this war that they're saying they'd rather go out with a bang in rather than the whimper. And do you really think they give a damn about birth rates? Because, you know, uh, there's a shortage of humans on this planet. And, uh, you know, our resources are just overabundant and there's so many folks. And we just got to get our birth rates up. I wonder what kind of birth rates he's talking about. When people like to talk about getting birth rates up, who could he possibly be talking about and why? And number three, why the hell are we listening to Elon Musk telling us about birth rates? As he does this, here's a compilation of the laughter that comes uh, from these two. Maybe you guys can guess which one of these is the most annoying person on the planet. (laughs) You did, you did. I'm just. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. (laughs) It's no longer parody, Miranda. It's no longer parody. We would laugh and act like we're these people with a monocle on and laughing at everyone all the time. And it was like a it's like a cartoon. It's real life now. You can't tell the difference between like satire and real life anymore. There is no difference. It's like when you see a headline and you have to double check to make sure it's not from The Onion or if it's from a regular news source because everything is just so ridiculous now and everything is just so they're just saying everything out loud now that they wouldn't say out loud before that you have to double check that it's not parody and someone making fun of them. Yeah, they're absolutely just laughing about birth rates and absolutely don't care about birth rates, don't care about what happens to those babies after they're born, don't care about all the kids in the foster system, don't care about, you know, giving the kids lunches at schools, you know, giving uh, daycare so the parents can go back to work. They just care about birth rates. One, it's something they can talk about. And two, it's definitely a way to just control women. <laughs> That's definitely the part of it. But then maybe even add it to this workforce of folks that they can have work for them. Because, you know, mm-hmm. they've already said, we're not looking to pay anyone, and we're also definitely not looking for people to keep their jobs because the best business uh, plan of the year or business decision of the year, Tucker said, was to fire more people. Um, <laughs> if they've drawn the, the, the lines of division. Which side do you plan to be on? Because they're definitely not on yours. 